Ham radio clubs suck. <laughs> That's what I've been hearing people like. Ham radio clubs, no, they need to change. And it's like, okay, it's probably true. And I've got, I've dragged Justin on this because uh, we have um, done a little bit with our club here. Correct. And we want to try and impart some of our learnings that we've made over the last little bit of the journey to try and see how we can change that perception that ham radio clubs suck. What's what's your opinion on ham radio clubs today? Like, It's a bit of a mixed bag. It is a bit of a mixed bag. A bit of a mixed yeah. bag. And there are clubs that are trying really hard. Um, and, and so don't get us wrong, they're, they're, they're trying really hard. Uh, but that, that sort of outreach um, and that getting themselves into the community and, and trying to sort of show that amateur radio is not this... Engaging in, a, in the right <laughs> correct, way. Correct, correct, yeah. correct. It's, it's, and trying to break some of those stereotypes of amateur radio. So I noticed something in QST magazine, might have been this month or last month, They've got a section in there called, I think it's Club Station. Mm. And uh, a club in the United States, they set up a trailer. And they've got all wow. of their radios okay. set up and everything. And they actually drive around the various schools. They drive around, oh, um, okay. like port, not just taking, in the ra taking it portable for setting up, but yep. also like it's more of a public thing yeah. to show okay. off. Sort of okay. like a, you know, the, a display trailer or a display you know, um, van or something like Engaging that. Engaging with the community. Yeah. And uh, STEM, STEM's a big one. Great. With, with, kids as well yes. and it, that's one of the things we've done there, there is the festival of bright ideas there is science week it's getting out there in front of students in front of the public uh, and showing them that amateur radio is this really exciting hobby we've had open days yep so we have usually one or two open days a year where we will have our club rooms here they'll be open to the, the general public and that's what the focus is the focus is not on other hams other hams can come along but the focus is on the public. So we advertise it on Facebook, yes, so uh, social socials. media, other socials as well. Uh, we speak to radio stations yep. as well and speak yep. to other members of the public, family, friends, whoever we can uh, think of. We actually pay for promotions as well because we think that the investment is worth it target to that. target yep. um, people who are interested in electronics, science, technology, yep. um, 3D printing, uh, makers. Makers well. and hacker spaces. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we've had quite a good turnout every time we've had that. We've had a lot of families come through, actually, Correct. haven't we, lately? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yep. cohort, that was quite a surprising cohort, actually, in the last the last one we had. And we don't have a car boot sale. <laughs> no, we have, no, a car boot sale we have separate. That is a Correct. separate ham radio thing, which is very important because, you know, yep. everyone loves a bit of trash or treasure. And the other thing you need, too, is you need key people key people to show off the fun aspects of the hobby activities well. in layman's language <laughs> yes. In, yes in in easy to understand language that engages with people when they come in the radio you've been on the radio just recently yep and, and we're talking with the radio we're talking oh, about <laughs> sorry. real radio the, fm yeah, broad, F broadcast broadcast radio, radio. Broadcast, radio. <laughs> broadcast radio yes it still exists yes <laughs> so um so yeah hayden was invited to to and it was a whole 18 minutes, which is a huge segment uh, for broadcast radio, local radio, ABC yeah. local radio. What do you remember of the first time you bounced a signal off the moon? Oh, okay, yes. Um, that's just one of the many, many things that you can do with amateur radio. I've been saying it's a hobby with a, within a thousand hobbies because there's so much stuff you can do. I, I wasn't able to get through the entirety um, of everything that I wanted to cover in the interview, which you can't do. But the positive thing was is that the producer that I spoke with, yep. I had a 40-minute conversation with her on the phone beforehand. Fantastic. And then also spoke to her when, when I got to the radio station. And she's going to be coming up to one of our nights. Great. Um, okay. That we have here regularly at uh, the club. We don't... Our, and our, that's the other thing is, is our club meetings that we have, we don't have club meetings where it's all business. And because if you have someone who's interested in amateur radio coming into a club and you invite them to a club meeting, they're mm. going to be like, this is so boring. This is all the Correct. business side of things. I don't really care about this. I yep. want to know what I can do. So we have every week uh, experimenters nights where we go through all sorts of different facets. I mean, what, what are we talking about tonight? The eclipse, uh, we're talking about, uh, yeah, 
uh, many, many things. Lightning Equipment, scatter. Lightning scatter. Uh, um, N-fed half waves. In, uh, correct. Yep. Some, some antennas, some yep. test equipment, some all sorts of things. Yep. So, and yep. we invite everyone to bring their gear that they're working on for show and tell. Bring it up on, on, a, on a Wednesday night. And we do that every week. Yep. Um, we stream it out on YouTube as well for those that can't get here too. Um, and that's good because people come up and, and there's a real... We've got a real community sense, a, a real close vibe going on here in the club of all different ages. Sure. We don't have one age demographic. We don't have all young. We don't have all old. We've got a good, good demographic. And I mean, we just had a club member the other day who, um, who didn't know anything about DMR, mm. and they come up and asked. Yep. And people were like, yeah, cool, I'll, we'll help you out, program to radio up, and good to go. Experimenters' nights are probably more focused on those people that work. Mm -hmm. Those people who are retired, so that's they're also club members, they have a Wednesday afternoon group. So they, they meet at Wednesday at lunchtime, bring their lunch up, um, solve the problems of the amateur world and all of that sort of <laughs> thing. Um, and, and then uh, we have a, a Wednesday evening group. So it's the WAGs, the Wednesday afternoon group, and the WEGs, which is the Wednesday experimenters group. All clubs usually have committees or the people that actually run the club. Yep. I know we've all, all of a sudden I've just lost all of the viewers on this video because uh, the volunteers <laughs> of those who run the club are few and far between. But here's a couple of tips which we've implemented into our club. Be a yes club, not a no club. That's what it's about. We have spread the load as it was. Yep. Um, roles where only one or two people were involved, we spread that to a, a subcommittee. So we yep. have like three or four people that are involved. Um, the key one was though is that we started up a membership um, subcommittee yep. so that there's two or three people who are, who are tasked with if, a me if we get a new member that they are signed up on our, our club newsletter that they get all of the information they require. Yep. Induction. Ask, induction. Yeah, induction. All that stuff. Ask them what interests you in the hobby and then they, they know who in the club they can then forward them on to. Oh, um, you know, such and such is interested in satellites. Okay, we need to pass him on to this amateur because he actually does satellites. Yep. He's the guy to go to. Yep. But rather than getting them to try and figure it out. Making those connections. We can have some of the newcomers coming into our circles in our clubs and it's very, very easy to say, oh, I've done this or I know what I'm talking about, which, you know, we have a lot of subject matter experts, <laughs> a lot of SMEs, mm. big number of SMEs. <laughs> They should be wanting to impart their knowledge and impart that onto the newbies, but there's also a way to do it. Correct. And that's in a way where not getting, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I know everything there is to know no, about no. satellites and you should be doing it this way, no, no. is just helping them through I'm, their own progress. i to help and support you in, yeah. in what you want to do because you've shown some interest. Yep, yeah, because we all started somewhere. Oh, yeah. We all, and we all had those Elmers that we all look back on very fondly and go, ah. Oh, he really helped me. Yeah, we've <laughs> probably. Or she. Or, yeah, yeah. We, this, yeah, actually, that's probably interesting. Is is at least here in Australia, we don't use that term Elma th that much. No. Um, but it is something that I think is very important. Is that we need to get back to the days of mm. really Elmering people. Yep. Um, or mentor, coach, mentor. Um, yeah. In business yep. parlance. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hayden's point earlier is we've separated the business side of running the club to a, a, a totally separate time. The, the committee meets um, uh, every so often, they meet every month, and those groups, those subcommittees meet as well, but they, they meet outside of our, our general meetings, um, and they do their business, they report back, and we tell members about what we're doing and all of that sort of thing, but that's quite, quite separate and, and doesn't involve uh, you know, the general populace, the general members. And we've also started a club discord. Oh, as yes. well, yes, yes. where we have about Huge. 90 members, I think. We've, we're, our club here in, in Hobart uh, is around about 140 members at the moment, yep. and 90 of those are on Discord, which is fantastic because we've got all sorts of sub-channels yep. on there to do with all sorts of things that we're talking about in the club. If someone someone suggested the other day, hey, uh, they started talking about Mesh-tastic, we want a Mesh-tastic channel. Cool, you've got a Mesh-tastic channel. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Mesh-tastic and everything else. Yep in there so um, we do our announcements we do our general chit chat people post the, the one of the biggest most popular channels in there is the soda and parks channel yep. so people are posting that they are up on the mountaintop they post you know the photos of the yep. mountain trip the equipment that they use hey my uh, you when, know this is the antenna spot. I built the spot yeah we've got an automatic when spotter spot. so we know so if a club member goes out and they decide to um, to Get on the air on a mountain. We get a we get an alert. Um, That's great. So yeah, it's it's 
utilizing what we've got to try and make things um, a little bit more accessible, a little bit more interesting. Uh, we, we try to be a doing club and, and I mean, it, it, for you watching, it might all sound like this is you know real easy, but it's a lot of hard work, and but you can get there. Well, Even I'm with just it. small little changes, you can get there. And, we and can, it's a bit of a snowball effect, actually. Once yes. things start happening, they start they start really happening. So generally, so. You, you probably need one or two key people who are the ones to really like really go getters to actually start yep. things and get the ball rolling. Once the ball has just said the ball starts rolling, it starts to snowball. That's when other people start to take it on, Correct. and then you do, you form these subgroups in your club. So, like I said, we've got the park subgroup, interest groups. We've got microwave well, subgroup, well, yeah, well. interest groups. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've got you know all sorts of different um, subgroups, and then it's good because they you know they all look after themselves eventually, well, and it and it means that um, you get a thriving club. And and I th feel like our club I'm quite proud of where yeah. our club's at at the moment. Well, and truly. and, um, well, and truly. what I would like to see is other clubs try and replicate some of our success that we feel that we've had yep. and uh, and do that you know um, in your club so um, ham radio clubs don't necessarily need to suck uh, they can be better and we can all work towards it that's for sure Justin did a talk not that long ago about all the ways that our club um, has been speaking to the public uh, we've also done another video on our open day as well which I'll also show yep. on the screen